Hello and welcome to this, the first in a brand new podcast series from Medigold Health. It's called Medigold Matters. Medigold Health is one of the UK's leading providers of health and wellness solutions to anyone who employs people, making sure that those people are fit, healthy, able to work and well. From being set up by Dr. Mike Goldsmith with just a handful of staff in 1998, the company has since grown into being a £33 million business, employing well over 500 of its own people, looking after over 2,000 clients and the well-being of over 2 million of their employees. I'm John Griff, and in the coming months we're going to be hearing from a variety of people contributing to the Medigold Health story. For this month, and to introduce the series, I've been talking to a couple of people not only shaping the direction of the company, but also helping its clients with their greatest single asset, their staff. Alex Goldsmith is Chief Executive of Medigold Health. It's pretty important that people, if they're joining a company, feel that that company cares. Not just about their health, but about their family life. You know, are they, are they happy? Um, are they engaged? You know, people used to spend a lot of money breaking people and then recruiting more people to fix the broken ones. Finally, we've realised it might be a better deal to um, keep the people you've got, enthuse them and not be spending money on trying to find new people once you've exhausted the ones you've got. So, yeah, I I see a real shift. It's great. Steve McNulty is director of Medigold Health Perform. We use an analogy uh, when we talk to our customers of a barrel. We say, imagine you have a barrel by the side of you where you can put all the toxins of life like, you know, pollution and eating bad and all that rest of it and you can put all of your stress and anxiety and it just goes in the barrel and you can leave it there what we get in life at the moment is that most people are half full or above half full and nobody notices until it overflows what we do at medigold in the simplest way is we provide taps to put on the side of the barrel so that you can take out and offload some of your stress and toxins and anxiety along the way so it never gets to the point of overflowing Alex and Steve are my guests. This is Medigold Matters. Alex Goldsmith took over the running of Medigold Health from his father in 2006, so he's clearly the best person to ask how the company delivers the range of services that it does to the market. Uh, Well, in in many different ways, uh, through a variety of of products and people and solutions, um, historically it was very people-centric, so nurses and doctors and technicians physically seeing people and being quite reactive to healthcare issues they they were being presented with. Um, more recently, a lot more technology, uh, a lot more um, mobile and remote delivery. So through a plethora of, of, you know, online and offline and in-person and remote and people and not people services, uh, everything. How do you keep up to speed with all of this? That's a great question, I mean, because we're, we're probably in the fastest moving or one of the fastest moving sectors in the country healthcare is something that has always got a new element to it some new progress some new systems some new technology or different ways to use the same technology that you know progress in in that regard so we have a lot of research and development a lot of time spent analyzing things to make sure they're the right things for our customers and our people Mm. and that our people understand how best to, to use them but also at the same time, whilst being cautious, making sure you're not left behind and left doing things in exactly the same way you did two, three, five years ago when other people have moved on. So it's a, it's a balancing act between upholding the quality of what it is you provide and moving with the times in a, in a um, good way. If you take occupational and health, between those two is virtually the whole of our existence as human beings because we spend a lot of time working. We also are always thinking about our health. Perhaps we're thinking about fitness rather than health. But in the last 12 to 18 months, health has become a very, very highly rated part of our consideration of life. Because we, we live in a wonderful society that has a phenomenal National Health Service, which is quite unusual, the UK has been a bit guilty of sort of assuming it's everyone else's problem to look after healthcare. And actually, employers historically haven't prioritised health at the top of the boardroom agenda. What's happened in the last five years, certainly, especially with the mental health, and as you've just alluded to, the mental health awareness that we're now seeing that it actually is a, a real problem in society, it's transformed that. So employers are now getting there. And, they, and then obviously COVID-19 has kind of added an extra level of turbocharge to that. And really, people are seeing that, yeah, you cannot have a good, engaged, resilient and happy workforce if, you're not, if you don't care about their health. 
Are you surprised by any of that, Alex? Because if you ask somebody what is important to them, if you are to ask them the, the three most important things in their lives, family would come somewhere near the top. The ability to earn an income would come somewhere near the top. Health would be right at the top, though, because without it, you can't do any of those things. No, and, and this comes right back to my, my father, who started the company 25, 23, 24 years ago. Um, he's a doctor, and he always felt that b- businesses should should care more about health because it's so important for that reason. Um, some people have done. Um, I cannot tell you why there's a curious thing in the UK in terms of our development as to why we haven't historically. I mean, I'd like to probably suggest part of it is, is, is unfortunately money and capitalism. Uh, people have been more interested in making money than they have been necessarily about the people that are helping them do that. But I think part of the reason it's changing is actually businesses have realised that if they do look after those people, the money also improves. So that's taken a while to work out. It's been harder without good technology to demonstrate savings mm. and demonstrate progress and, and what it can do to businesses' bottom line doing good healthcare. So now we've got both those things. We've got actually a real genuine intent to do the right thing aligned to the fact that conveniently it also helps them improve the bottom line of their business. So that's what's changed. And um, thank goodness, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty important that people, if they're joining a company feel that that company cares not just about their health but about their family life you know are they are they happy um are they engaged you know people used to spend a lot of money breaking people and then recruiting more people to fix the broken ones finally we've realized it might be a better deal to um keep the people you've got enthuse them and not be spending money on trying to find new people once you've exhausted the ones you've got so yeah i think i see a real shift it's great we're sitting at your headquarters in Northampton, slap bang in the centre of the UK. Alex, they say one size fits all. Clearly it doesn't. But from a business point of view, you deal with really big businesses. What about somebody who might be listening to this today who has a smaller style of business, wants to do something for their workforce, knows perhaps that there are steps that they need to take, but is worried about cost or worried that they're just going to be a bit of a minnow compared to the kind of business that ordinarily you would be involved with. Are you interested in them? Uh, not just interested, uh, crying out for. Healthcare should be available to anybody, whether you've got two people or 10,000 people or 150,000 people, which our biggest customer has historically, occupational health and good employee well-being has not been available to businesses of less than sort of 250 people. And it's a crusade we took on in the middle of COVID year to fix that and a, and a crusade that continues with our Medigold Health Protect product. So I would encourage any small business to go online and look up Medigold Health Protect and we can't wait to start looking after you. Our country is deep in recession at the moment. How much of an investment have employers continued to make in the well-being of their staff? You know, having given employers a little bit of a bashing for historically being, you know, not as, not, not thinking about their staff as much as they should. And, and I should say, you know, my customer base, because they work with us, you know, they, they, they mainly get it and they do, they do invest. But um, actually, I will give them a, a, a bit of an easier time on this question, because I think in recessions, historic, both in the one in 2008 and recently, Spending on health and wellness has tended to be pretty resilient, um, mainly because um, businesses do get that if you if you don't spend money on the services we provide, you're actually going to have bigger spend problems or bigger cost problems. You know, if you've got half your workforce not there, how are you going to get yourself out of recession? If you've got, um, you know, huge amounts of sick pay being paid out to people across the board and they're not at work in a recession, that's worse than in times when, in, you know, in boom times. Well, so, you've, got to, you've got to cover the ground twice, haven't correct. you? Correct. So I think they get that. But then what's happened this time is even more than that because it's a because this recession has been caused by a health issue. They're now saying what we were doing before wasn't good enough. What can we do more now in all aspects of health and wellness and, and risk prevention mm. to make us more resilient as a business going forward because actually the ones that have the businesses that have got through this and thrived are the ones that actually effectively double down and go okay we've we've licked our wounds we've learned our lessons let's let's spend the money in the right places to make sure when this comes along again we're much better prepared so in a bizarre almost a perverse sense once the pandemic has gone do you think we're actually going to have a nation of healthier better informed better performing businesses I'm so pleased to say my answer to that question is an resounding absolutely. It has been profound. I, we, I said to my staff, we, we did lose temporarily 
a lot of our income last year, as many businesses did, through just the shock of COVID and not being able to do things in a certain way. And it, we, we were very resilient and recovered within weeks, but it was tricky. But I said then to my staff, who all worried, you know, was there going to be a, a Medigold in 2021? I actually said to them, I really hope and I, f I think that businesses that get through this will will spend 120, 130% on our services that they were spending in previous years because there'll be things that they now deem to be important that, that weren't before. And also, we, we've become so much more creative in the way we're offering services because when we had a lot of our traditional income fall away through COVID, through no fault of our own, we had to come up with innovative new ideas and things that could help people that we hadn't thought of before because we weren't being creative enough. You know, extreme stress created a situation of extreme creativity. And that's something that I, I think our business will certainly take forward, but I think other businesses and buying businesses will also take forward. It's not a given that our business will thrive going forward, but I think it's our responsibility to our people and to the country in terms of its health to make sure that we don't drop the ball and do offer the right things in the right way with the right accessibility. Because if I think we do that, the businesses will buy it and will reward us for doing so. A question for you, and I'll ask the same of Steve. How's your mental well-being right now as we speak at the end of Mental Health Awareness Week? I'm very lucky. I've literally never really had bad mental health. I'm quite resilient. I've, I, can, I don't think I can say I've ever been properly depressed. I did have, I'll tell you, last June when everything was very, very tough, running a, running a 500, 600-person business through the most traumatic period in my corporate life was challenging and I did have a period where I got as close probably as I've ever been to breaking down but I didn't and it was really a, f a function of the climate we we're in when that started to get better I improved but yeah we talk about mental health a lot as a family um, we and as a business I think that that stigma has gone I would be very surprised you know if anybody took a different view nowadays and I think if you do take a different view you're not going to last very long you know, in this world that we're now living in. On LinkedIn yesterday, I was reading a very touching post by a man who showed a picture of a text that was the last a piece of communication he'd received from his son who tragically killed himself a few hours after sending his dad that text. And it really affected me. Uh, you know, I, I'm a dad, but I'm also, a, I, as I said, I've got family members that have had depression and, and have had uh, mental health problems. And we all know possibly hundreds of people that have struggled with mental health. So why in the world was it ever a taboo? It seems very strange. But now everyone understands it. The last thing you want is for people not to reach out if they're struggling. And we would always say as a, as a professional you know, company, but also you know, just as people, if you're struggling, just talk to somebody. Tell them how you feel. Because it's very likely that that somebody you pick will help you and you'll get, the, you'll get the support you need. And it's certainly not just professional help, but just sometimes it's, you just need to speak to another human being. Alex, it's really good to have you on this first podcast for Medigold Health. I look forward to more conversations in the future. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks. That's Chief Executive of Medigold Health, Alex Goldsmith. Now, as you've already heard, this podcast comes at the end of Mental Health Awareness Week across the UK. It's a topic which has become far more openly talked about in the past couple of years, and particularly so during the coronavirus pandemic. Steve McNulty joined the company earlier this year as Director of Medigold Health Perform. From a time when talking about mental health was perhaps seen as taboo, I asked him whether the gap between our willingness to talk about physical health and mental health has been closing, and that we're now more actively engaged by both. Uh, dramatically. Um, it's not only gone from mind-body, it's gone mind-body-spirit in some areas. And so it's a holistic approach. Uh, when I started in this back in the early 2000s, some of the things that I trained in, the therapies I trained in, everybody thought I was a bit woo-woo. You know, nowadays, we've got all the, the neuroscience backup to show why these things work, and they've become mainstream and accepted in society. And I think with that, there's also been two great issues through the pandemic, and we've seen through this week, two great issues that are not normal in society, and certainly not since the Second World War. Mm. One is we don't know when this pandemic is going to end. We really still don't really know. And that affects everybody's psychological security. And we also, it's existential problem. We, we can kill anybody anywhere, anytime. And so it's quite frightening for people. And so psychologically, they get very insecure. Now, add to that, having to work from home, crashing the family and the workplace together, having worrying about whether you've got a job to go back to, worrying about the economy. The stresses and strains have been immense. And I think this week has shown that 
companies are really keen to help people to be resilient to that, but not just resilient, which is being able to cope, but to make the best of it, to take what we're given, take us where we are with what we've got and help us to do better. And I think this week has shown there's a lot of interest in how do we help our people to not only get through, but come out the other side better than they went in. I guess if people's physical well-being is as it should be, you're going to get people turning up to work on time, you're going to have less absenteeism, but you can have people who are in work, at work, be it from home or perhaps back in the working environment, their mental health may not be up to par with their physical health. And health ebbs and flows, which means that you've got your physical well-being, you've got fitness, you've also got uh, illness, which is perhaps a slightly different thing, and that works in both the physical and the emotional area. How does Medigold Health do what it does for not only employees, but also employers who want their employees up to strength in both sense? I think well, what we do is we, wake up, we work very, very simply on the basis that we don't believe anybody goes to work to do a bad job, that everybody wants to do their best, everyone wants to get better at things. But you're absolutely right. You can turn up physically, but if you don't turn up mentally, the, 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 the phrase we use these days is presenteeism. So you're at the office or at the workplace, but you're not doing much. Mm. Um, and that's a huge cost to industry. I mean, Deloitte did a fantastic update to their survey the back end of last year showing how many billions it's costing us as a, as a country in terms of you know, mental issues or uh, mindset issues. But they also said that for every pound you invest in well-being, you're going to get a five-pound return on investment. Now, that takes away the argument from people that I don't know where my money's going. You know, we've got someone as, 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 as renowned as Deloitte saying there is a return on investment for this. And so people are coming and saying, well, how can I invest in this? And so the, the issues with regards to stress and anxiety are more open in the marketplace. Now, they're more open in the workplace because we want to put it right. We want everybody to be working. And that's, what, that's basically what we do at Medigold Health Perform. We help people to think better so they can think well, so they can work well, and so they can live well. If we can take the stress and anxiety and mental issues out of the workplace, I believe we can take them out of the home. And if we take them out of the home, we're going to give our kids a great world to live in and create great societies going forward. I'm interested in your use of the word investment there, Steve, because there's almost an, an, an invisible visibility to that relationship between the employer and the employee. If the employer visibly is saying, we're committed to you as an employee, not only for your physical, but your emotional, your mental well-being as well, that says to the employee, this business is making an investment in me, and therefore I feel either tighter within that organization. I feel a bigger part of the of the machinery. I feel like a bigger piece of the family than might otherwise be the case. That's got to be good for all parties. It has to be good for everybody. It has to be good for everybody that everybody knows they care, that everybody cares, but also the fact that, that it's okay to, to not be okay. Mm. It's okay to say I'm not okay. If you were taking a, a major football team, for example, and somebody had a bit of a sprained knee, you'd expect them to tell the trainer, I've got a sprained knee, you know, I need it fixed. Um, but if their thinking state, their mental state wasn't quite right in the past, you know, these days they'll go and say, look, my head's not in the right place, you know, can, can I get some help? Mm. Um, mm. The same in business. It's, a, it's the same everywhere. And I don't care where you sit in business, whether you're the group CEO of a global company or whether you're the apprentice shelf stacker at the local supermarket. We all can suffer massive amounts of stress and anxiety in context to where we are. And so it's, it's, it's easy to say, oh, it comes with the territory. Oh, I'm paid to do it this way. I'm paid to take this. No, you're not. And you can perform far better if you don't have it. We use, a, we use an analogy uh, when we talk to our customers of a barrel. We say, imagine you have a barrel by the side of you where you can put all the toxins of life like you know, pollution and eating bad and all that rest of it. And you can put all of your stress and anxiety and it just goes in the barrel and you can leave it there. Now, in normal life, you'd want two very low levels in that barrel. What we get in life at the moment is that most people are half full or above half full. 
and it fills up and fills up as you go through and you get more stressed and more anxious. And nobody notices until it overflows. And we call that overwhelm. And then you're fighting a rear guard action. You're having to react to something. What we do at Medigold in the simplest way is we provide taps to put on the side of the barrel mm -hmm. so that you can take out and offload some of your stress and toxins and anxiety along the way so it never gets to the point of overflowing. Nice analogy. For those people who might be listening to this and saying to themselves, well, I've only got a small business. I've only got five employees. I've only got 15 employees. I don't have 500 or 5,000 employees. Does scale matter? Because I guess right now with the recession as it is, and we are in recession, with the pandemic as it is, and we may be on our way out of pandemic, but as you said earlier, we don't know that that is the case. Cost is inevitably going to be an issue. We talked about investment can Medigold Health help small businesses in the same way as it can help larger businesses? Well, I think that's an excellent observation. It's uh, something that has been missing in this market for a long period of time. Most of the big occupational health companies and the big mental health companies only really deal in the corporate market. Mm. Over the past year or two, Medigold Health have been very proactive in this area. We've developed Medigold Health Protect which is a service for companies with less than 250 staff. And there's nobody else in the marketplace really doing that. And we've, we've addressed that and looked at how can we get a return on the investment and also give our small to medium-sized business owners, because they tend to be the owner, they tend to be the person who puts a credit card on the table for expenses, uh, how can we give them a return on investment? And we do that through Protect, which is for like an occupational health variant but in perform by having what we call peer groups so rather than me running a workshop on performing under pressure for a corporate i would get 10 local ceos together and say hey come on there's no competitors in the room there's no suppliers you can be vulnerable here let's work out how you can all perform better under pressure and that means that they're paying hundreds rather than the thousands of pounds in investment they're getting the same service, but they're doing it across the base of a number of companies rather than their own. So we've tried to be agile in making sure that we can reach every company and help every company at a level of cost that they know there's going to be a fair return on that investment. And if you can make cost less of an argument against going ahead, then clearly you can sweep that out of the way. And actually you can get at the issue itself, which is the mental well-being of people who will be productive not only right now, to, to a greater degree, but also productive to a greater degree for longer as well. If there was one thing that could improve our engagement with mental well-being, perhaps on both sides of the equation, employer and employee, what would it be? I think I, I'd go back a few years and start in junior school. Yeah, I would actually bring it into the curriculum in school. I'd bring it into the curriculum in all education and actually build it into the culture as we go forward. Um, because I certainly do believe that if we can take it out, we can accept mental health issues, hit them head on, then we're going to create a, a, a society that's good for everybody. In the mental health arena, the one thing that I would do now would be to actually have, I don't know what I would call it really, I think you'd call it an amnesty. <laughs> you say to everybody, every worker in the country, your job is safe. Now, bring your issues and let's get them sorted. Because I think we all know I come from a corporate background originally before I went into the uh, smaller business market. Very difficult to say I've got a, 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 a mental issue. You know, the people wouldn't do it. Uh, it, would, it was taboo. And I remember going into large boardrooms and saying, I'm going to teach you about how to control stress and anxiety. Not because you need it because you obviously don't, but so you can notice it in your staff and help them. That was the only way you could get it in because the board were not going to put their hand up and say, well, I'm stressed. The one thing I'd have is on the agenda, on the agenda at all meetings in media, that there is you know, a mental health agenda all the time. So education, yeah. bravery, yeah. honesty, yeah. and trust. And trust. Four pillars yeah. that could perhaps move us forward as a nation. Yeah, and that would require vulnerability you know accepting this is where i am and being honest and open about it um, i think that's the real basis of trust so how's your mental health today steve 
Well, I, I say, I was a little bit anxious this morning, going driving up, I'm going to have this podcast with, with you, and I thought, yeah, a little bit anxious. But, you know, we've got tools and techniques that can take that away. Uh, we've just put out, at the beginning of this week, the latest version of our Zen Power app, which reduces stress and anxiety in everybody. In the last survey we did of 1,200 people using it, the average reduction in stress and anxiety in less than five minutes was 67%. Now, if you can get rid of 60 or 70% of your stress and anxiety in less than five minutes, and it doesn't cost you, it costs you less than a cup of coffee a week, um, and it's there 24-7, 365, give me a reason why you wouldn't use it. That's Director of Medigold Health Perform, Steve McNulty. We're at the end of our time together for this, the first edition of Medigold Matters. My thanks to Alex Goldsmith and Steve McNulty for their time and for talking to me. Thanks to you too for listening. And if any of what we've been discussing has left you wanting to know more, just go to medigold-health.com or put Medigold into your chosen search engine. Join me again in a few weeks' time for the next edition of Medigold Matters. In the meantime, take care and goodbye.